This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by Citrix GoToAssist, the number one global market leader in remote support. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today we are checking out Wireshark with an exploitation attack. Now, working on the shoulders of last week's episode, this week we'll discuss what exploits look like in Wireshark. Now, there are plenty to cover, and I'm just gonna do two, so just stick with me, and then you can find other examples on the internet. So the example that I'm going to be sharing is from the Practical Packet Analysis book by Chris Sanders about, well, Wireshark. So this packet is going to show you what happens when a user visits a really malicious site that's using a bad version of Internet Explorer. Now, this malicious problem was called Aurora. It was back from, I believe, 2010. Now, what it's doing is called spear phishing. First, we have HTTP traffic on port 80, so that looks pretty normal if we go all the way up to the top. So first off, if we go all the way to the top of this stream to packet number one, we see a whole bunch of traffic going over HTTP, port 80, looks totally normal, right? Now, we notice that there is a 302 moved response right down here. So that's packet number six. That's kind of weird. It doesn't really happen every day. It might be something that we need to look at. So that could be a malicious site and the location is all sorts of weird if we scroll down a little bit. Now, if we look at this, we'll notice that the location right here, that's where you're gonna see something strange. So if that looks odd, that might be a red flag. Now there is a whole bunch of data that gets transferred from the new site to the user after this. If I click on follow TCP stream, and I can just do that by clicking here, I notice that there's gonna be a whole bunch of information up at the top. It looks decently normal. And then we scroll down and we see this thing in a script command. So it's a bunch of gibberish. That looks pretty odd. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And then if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we see that there's an iframe attack going on here. So what in the world is this iframe thing? That's gonna be a red flag as well. In this case, it's the exploit being sent to the user. Now, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna scroll down a little bit after I erase that, to packet number 21. And we notice that we're receiving another get request. So this time, if I scroll all the way to the side, it's for a GIF or a GIF, depending on who you are. So it's a get request for some kind of image. Now lastly, if we follow packet 25, which looks like so, I'm gonna follow the TCP stream for this then we really get a red flag. So when we open up this, we see that there's a Windows command shell and the attacker is gaining admin privileges to our users' files. Like there's a passwords.txt in here, which is pretty kind of scary. Okay, that's freaky. But now a network admin can use this intrusion detection system to set up a new alarm whenever an attack of this nature is actually seen on their network. So it's really, really useful to find out what this stuff looks like in Wireshark so you can actually set up some kind of, you know, cutoff point so they won't be able to get into your network. Now I'm going to be right back with some more exploits and fun with Wireshark. With GoToAssist Remote Support, you can provide live and unattended support to any computer or mobile device. You can screen share with employees to diagnose and fix their support problems faster and more effectively. And you can use GoToAssist apps to deliver support anytime, anywhere, from your Android, your iPhone, or your iPad device. Now with the new See It feature, people can stream their smartphone's camera to GoToAssist so you can even see whether something's wrong with the hardware. Sign up today for a 30-day free trial, no contract, no credit card needed. Visit GoToAssist.com and click on the Try It Free button right now. And if you purchase a GoToAssist annual plan before March 31st, you'll get a free Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 as well. That's GoToAssist.com and we would like to thank them for their support of Hacktip. We're back with more exploits in Wireshark. Now, if someone is trying to do a man-in-the-middle attack on a user, it might look something like this. So it looks pretty normal, right? But as we scroll down in here, we notice that there's also something else interesting happening here. We notice that there is 
these three different cases where this Hewlett Packard, this HP device, just kind of shows up out of nowhere. That's kind of weird. So normally when this happens, it's going to be an ARP cache poisoning attack. It's ARP packets being sent back and forth, but in packet 56, the attacker sends another ARP packet with a different MAC address from the router, thereby sending the user's data to the attacker and then the router. So hence man in the middle attack. If we compare number 57, packet number 57 with the destination IP of being .147, the MAC ID shows up as Hewlett Packard, so this HP computer. But if we look at an earlier one that's supposed to be sent to the router, like number 40, it's also being sent to IP 147, but the MAC address is for the Cisco router. Huh obviously an ARP cache poisoning attack. Now, I wanna know if you guys have ever seen any kind of attacks on your system and how you really were able to notice that it was there in Wireshark. Let me know what you think and of course your comments below or email us tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolust.